Hare Krishna. Uh, recently we celebrated Ram Nomi. So this question regarding uh, when Ram was exiled from Ayodhya and uh, that time the Praja were asking Lord Ram to not go into the forest. But uh, Ram followed his Putra Dharma following the order of Dashrath Maharaj and he went. And then in the last, when mm, there I was a case, the question, then yeah. Sita, the banishment of Sita, we By call it. Lord Ram hear the citizens at uh, that time. Then, uh, yeah, the, my question, there are two aspects of this. Uh, one is then Lord Ram listened to the citizens, so he gave up, he, the, in the first case he was prince that time, here he was a king and uh, he followed his king dharma rather than pati dharma. So I want to understand the what 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 was the Ram's discernment over here, and the second is when we also live, while living in our day-to-day -day life, there is a conflict amongst uh, upper dharmas which we, we need to follow. Various uh, like in modern language, various roles one has to play. So there is conflict amongst the roles also that it happens. So how to resolve that? The, the, okay. the first question is the Ram's discernment, okay, and second is it. our own okay. life. So <laughs> when the citizens of Ayodhya told Ram. Uh, to stay on in the kingdom, he followed his putra dharma and went to the forest. But when those same citizens, uh, they accused Sita, uh, at that time, he took their word seriously and he abandoned his uh, pati dharma and he followed his raja dharma at that time. So what was the basis for his decision making? Yes, the when we are having different roles, at that time, there will be different priorities at different times. So for example, when Ram is still a son, he is a prince, he is not yet the king. So his primary duty at that time is not to the citizens. His primary duty is to his father at that particular time. And so he at that time focused on that duty. So all of us, we have various roles and various relationships various activities in those relationships, but there is a hierarchy within that. And in his case, he felt that his father's duty, uh, his father's instruction was the most important. That way, even his father was torn. His father did not want, and Dashrath Maharaj didn't want Ram to go. But he was obliged because of the desire to honor the word. And actually, that is the more important thing. It was not just his father's will or his citizen's will. What was the honorable course of action in that situation? The Kshatriyas have enormous power and that power because often in a kingdom when a Kshatriya is there, there is no one to counter that king, the Kshatriya is the king. No one has that much power and such, such concentration of power in one person is in many ways a recipe for abuse of power. So one of the important check and balance for Kshatriyas in preventing them from abusing their power is they are ingrained with a very deep sense of honor. That means once you give a word, you have to keep it. Because otherwise they may give a word and they may not keep it. Who is going to haul them over the coals? Who is going to, who, who's going to actually challenge them or counter them? So because often there will be no one for that. So in Kshatriyas, the word of honor, the choosing the honorable code of course of action is considered extremely important. And he considered here that Dashrath Maharaj had given a word to KK that I will give you two boons. And therefore, that was his primary consideration. Obedience to his father and more than obedience to his father because his father's, it was not direct. Dashrath Maharaj actually never told Ram to go to the forest. It was KK who told on behalf of, uh, of Dashrath. And Dashrath actually tried to stop him in various ways. But it was honoring his father's word that was important. And that's why he chose to, at that time, go to the forest. Now, in the second case, when the citizens came back, now the question may come here, first of all, those, those same citizens, when Ram is going out to the forest, they appear to be such great devotees. Now They are crying in separation. Often the songs of the agony of the... Ayodhya Vasis and how they follow Ram deep into the forest, how in the separation of Ram, the whole city of Ayodhya becomes like a ghost town, completely inactive, completely desolate. So that whole seems to say that Ram is a very great devotee. I'm sorry, Ram, the Ayodhya Vasis are very great devotees of Ram. Then how could they 
become so judgmental towards sita later on so actually this is ultimately uh, the arrangement of the lord he arranged for the citizens to act in particular ways and it was not the majority of the citizens there were a few citizens who said like that and that that word was spreading among the citizens every manifestation of the lord descends for a particular purpose and lord ram's manifestation is to demonstrate the principle of sacrifice no the valmiki ramayan starts with saying that it will describe the characteristics of a ideal human being and one characteristic which the ramayan consistently depicts is sacrifice sacrifice means giving up one's own comfort and pleasure for some higher cause and all the characters in the ramayan assist in this mood of sacrifice so that means why does why does lakshman come with ram that is a mood of sacrifice why does sita come with ram that's a mood of sacrifice you know why does bharat stay on as uh, the bharat not accept the kingdom but live in austerity similar to what ram is doing in the forest that's the mood of sacrifice so the, the whole ramayan's mood is to illustrate ramayan's focus is to illustrate the mood of sacrifice and these citizens when they start accusing mother sita that is also to illustrate another mood of sacrifice so otherwise if you say that ram he fought such a big war he defeated ravana he got sita back and he abandoned her you no know, why did he have to fight the whole war for if that was if that was there you know he could just have let sita stay with ravana why did he have to fight the war no the point was ram always acted honorably and honorably acting means obeying his father honorably acting means making sure that he protected his wife and rescued her once she was abducted and acting honorably at this particular time meant that he had to send his wife away from him to uh, to valmiki munis ashram now sometimes some people say that ram exiled sita now exile is not really appropriate word for this because exile means normally in the those times because when bharat comes back bharat says that how could ram have been exiled he says exile is the second worst punishment the worst punishment for a criminal is execution and one level below that is exile exile means basically everything that you have is taken away execution means everything including your life is taken away exile means everything is taken away except your life a person is sent out to the forest into the jungle with uh, out of one's own kingdom with nothing for oneself but that was not what happened to sita with sita she was taken to valmiki muni's ashram and she was kept over there valmiki muni also took care of her among the female her uh, uh, female hermits that were there in his ashram they took a uh, maternally motherly role towards sita so and that uh, valmiki muni's ashram was still in ram's kingdom so indirectly sita was still under ram's care so at that particular time ram felt that his duty as a king required him to demonstrate detachment and it was not and this was not simply reputation there's a difference between honor and reputation reputation is what the world thinks about me honor is whether i act in the right way in the honorable way so ram if he had been simply concerned about his reputation then actually for a king the most in that culture the most repu most reputation enhancing thing to do was to perform sacrifices like the ashwamedha yagya or the rajasuya yagya which yudhishthira maharaj performed and whenever a ashwamedha yagya is to be performed at that time it has to be performed as a couple the husband and wife have to perform it together and for ram to perform it without his wife now that was actually a dent on his reputation so it was it was but he didn't care for that at that he did not you know he did not he did not abandon sita he actually entrusted her safely to another place and more importantly he never tried to replace sita with anyone he simply got a effigy of sita made and that was next to him when the sacrifice was being performed 
So, Ram is by no means uh, rejecting his responsibility towards Sita, nor is he rejecting Sita. He is actually demonstrating the whole Ramayana's mood of sacrifice. And that sacrifice is that he, Sita sacrifices to assist in Ram's mission. And the significant thing is that Sita doesn't challenge Ram's judgment over here. Sita doesn't protest. Say, oh, you don't know that I was so chaste. Why are you rejecting me like that? She understands what Ram is doing. And Sita, she challenges Ram earlier when Ram tells Sita to stay at home and not go to, come with him to the forest. At that time, he challenges. He says, I must, I must come with you. But now she does not challenge, I must stay with you. So the problem often comes when we take the current cultural standards and try to evaluate scripture and scriptural decisions from those cultural standards. So, yes, in today's society, for a man to uh, turn away his pregnant wife, that is scandalous. That outrage, that should not be done. But in the context of Ramayana, there is a whole different dynamic going on over there. And no Acharya has ever told that this particular action of Ram is what everyone has to follow in life. No one has told like that. No Acharya and all those who have worshipped Ramayana, they have talked about this, those who have worshipped Ram and those who have taught the Ramayana, they have taught this simply as an example of how sacrificing Ram was. So he chose that dharma, it was not just the, he rejected his pati, pati dharma, but rather he focused on his Raj dharma and he did the Pati dharma in that context, by indirectly keeping Siddha in his protection, by keeping her in Valmiki's ashram. Does that answer your question? Yeah.